in-ground vermicomposting. Does it work and should you give it a try? On today's episode of Coffee and Compost, we'll get to that and why I think in-ground vermicomposting is one of the most misunderstood methods of enriching your soil. In-ground vermicomposters can work, just not the way people think. My name is Steve Churchill, and this is the Urban Warp Company. Hey guys, a YouTube subscriber got in touch this week and he was asking if it made sense to do an in-ground vermicomposter to turn horse manure into worm castings. He saw a few permaculture experts on YouTube building their own in-ground vermicomposting setups using either lumber or cinder block for the sidewalls and he wanted to try it too. It seemed too simple and maybe too good to be true, so he got in touch to see what I thought. Now lots of you may know that I'm the guy that makes the urban worm bag, a very much above ground vermicomposter and I love how it works for me and my customers. But I also love the idea of in-ground vermicomposting for folks who don't mind a little upfront DIY work. This guy in particular was in the mountains of Tennessee, which can experience both hot and cold extremes. And that makes the choice to do vermicomposting in-ground even better. One of the first things I learned about when I started vermicomposting were those in-ground PVC worm towers. And if you check out this video here, you can learn why I think they don't really work. To save you a click though, vermicomposting is dependent on surface area, and the openings of PVC pipes don't provide enough surface area to do any significant amount of vermicomposting. But large in-ground composters do have enough space, and they're super forgiving. If you screw up your mix of food and bedding in one area, the worms could always move somewhere else in the bed to escape your mistakes. And because Earth's temperature is constant just a few feet below the surface, you get a good bit of geothermal heating and cooling to keep your vermicompost cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter. This guy also asked about loading up half of it with fresh manure, adding worms, letting the worms and microbes break down the horse manure. Then a couple months later, he planned to add fresh manure to the other side of the in-ground bed with the idea that the worms and the older horse manure would move over to the fresh stuff. Again, thumbs up to that. But this idea does have a couple drawbacks. One of them is that harvesting castings can be a little tricky. We think the worms would all just move to the fresh stuff, but lots of them are gonna stay in the older material. So if you just wanna pull the processed worm castings out of the older half of the in-ground bed, you can expect it to have some worms in it. The other is that, especially for older people, it can be difficult to first build an in-ground bed by digging below ground, setting the walls and all that, but then you gotta shovel the finished material out of a bed that's below ground level. It makes my back hurt just thinking about it. But if you don't mind a forgiving, but kind of imprecise way of doing vermicomposting, then an in-ground bed is awesome. In fact, I'm kind of inspired now to move forward on creating my own in-ground system. I'm gonna do it right here. I'm basically gonna dig a four foot by four foot, maybe four foot by eight foot bed and load it up with horse manure and coarse worms and see if reality matches my expectations. I'm gonna use cinder blocks to make sure it's as durable as possible and cover it with a layer of straw or maybe a cover that my wife wouldn't mind seeing in the yard. Wish me luck on that. Real quick guys, if you're enjoying this video and love me to make more of them, please like this video, hit subscribe, and click that little bell to let you know every time we release a new video. All right, now back to in-ground vermicomposters. So this brings me to the Subpod, which is a pretty popular and slickly marketed product out of Australia. They have a line of attractive in-ground vermicomposters, but there's a serious misconception about how this thing works. The subpod has holes in the walls and the bottom, which a lot of people think allow composting worms to eat their dinner, leave the subpod, tunnel their way around the garden to drop their castings, and then come back to the subpod for their next meal. That's not how this works, and here's why. There are three classes of earthworms, anisic, endogeic, and epigeic. Anisic worms are your deep, vertically burrowing, muscular night crawlers. Epigeic worms live in the top few inches of topsoil. They're a bit scrawnier and lighter colored and their burrows are more horizontal. Epigeic worms, and epigeic is Greek for on the earth, don't burrow in soil at all. They need loose organic matter like leaf mold, manure, and duff on the forest floor. All composting worms are epigeic, even ones that are called night crawlers, and they just aren't muscular enough to leave the subpod and aerate dense garden soil. And I'm sorry to say that these worms aren't house trained either. They're gonna stay put and literally sh where they eat. They're not leaving the bin to go do that. But the idea of the soil being improved around the subpod isn't all snake oil either. You probably will see looser soil around the subpod thanks to earthworms aerating the ground, but there'll be native soil dwelling worms coming from the surrounding soil to get a free meal on all that organic matter that you're putting in the ground. Now you won't see these worms swarming food waste like composting worms do. They just don't like living that densely among one another. 
but you will see them in the bin, and this is a good thing. Now, I mentioned large in-ground vermicomposting setups being forgiving. This is important because new vermicomposters tend to make a lot of mistakes, and I've noticed that most make one or more of six different mistakes when they get started. So I created a simple, easy to read guide called Rookie Vermicomposting Mistakes That Everyone Makes. If you click the little link above my left shoulder, you can sign up to get that guide immediately. I've gotten great feedback on PDF resources like this, so if you haven't gotten your copy, it's worth signing up and getting it right now. So I love the idea of in-ground vermicomposting. It's a great way to use the stability of Earth's temperature to keep your vermicomposting efforts going even in extreme temperatures. And the larger your in-ground bin, the more mistakes you can make and still consider yourself a successful worm composter. All right, gang, that's it. We're gonna see you on the next video.